there is a smarter way to split documents for GenAI applications. And the best part is that it can automatically find the best split point based on the meaning of topics in the document. It is called semantic splitting, and we are going to see concretely how it works in a simple example. Then you should be able to significantly improve the performance of your app, especially for retrieval augmented generation. I will show you first how it works in theory, and then we are going to implement it from scratch in a Python notebook that you can find on GitHub, link in the description below. Let's go! Let's have a quick reminder about what we need to split documents. Language models have a knowledge cutoff. It means that they only know the data they've seen during training. If there is new data or data that was not present in the training set, your language model is not aware of it. And it's a problem because many applications need up-to-date data. Language models are also slow and expensive to train or fine-tune, so it's not a viable option if you have lots of data or if your data is constantly growing. There is a more efficient way called retrieval augmented generation. Let's see how it works. You have a set of documents, but you can't use them directly with your large language model because of the context limitation. So you split them into chunks. Then you receive a user query. For instance, what are the latest news about AI? Then you find the relevant chunks in the set of chunks you stored somewhere in the database or on the disk. Then to answer the question, you combine the user query with the relevant chunks, you send them to GPT-4 and you get the answer. It sounds good, but how do you optimally chunk documents in the second step? You can go for a fixed number of characters, sentences, paragraphs, or pages. But intuitively, it would be better if you could automatically split the sections by their meaning or topics. And that's precisely what semantic splitting is all about. Now let's see how semantic splitting works in details. The first step is to construct a simple example to study. To do so, we're going to retrieve from Wikipedia two different topics. First, Francis I of France, so the wiki page of a king, and then linear algebra, the wiki page of a mathematical topic. As you can see, those two topics are quite different semantically. One speaks about history, and the second about math. Then the next step is to split the document into sentences, as you can see here in grey. We then categorize the sentence by sections. So where does it come from? Here it's represented as the color. So green for Francis I of France and blue for linear algebra. Then we need to group those sentences for each section. And finally we'll construct a final document with interleaved sections. So we have first a section from the wiki page of the king, then from linear algebra, and again from the king, and finally the linear algebra. Doing so, we expect to find optimal split points at those positions, and we're going to use semantic splitting to do so. Let's change our perspective a bit, and represent the different sentences from left to right, with the optimal split points now here, here, and here. As you can see, at the place where the section changes from the King of France to Linear Algebra. In this window, we're going to merge the sentences from the first half and the second half and compute their embeddings. Embeddings represent text into vectors that capture the semantic, which is the meaning or topic of the text. You can see it that way. If two texts speak about the same topic, the divergence between the embedding will be low because they are semantically close. On the contrary, if two texts speak about different topics, the divergence of the embedding will be high because it speaks about different stuff. So we get the embeddings for the first half and the second half of the window, and we compute their divergence, which gives us a value. The next step is to slide and compute the divergence for every window. As you can see here, we advance the window one by one and we compute all the divergences. What should we expect? If we plot the divergence in function of the window position, we can expect to have this kind of graph with peaks at the place where we change from one section to the other. Here is why. If we take this kind of window, the divergence is slow because sentences from the first half and the second half are from the same wiki page. But if we look at this window, the divergence is high because the first two sentences and the last two sentences speak about different topics. And now it should be clear why semantic splitting is helpful because we can define the optimal split points 
at the place where the divergence is the highest or at the places where we have peak of divergence. Now that we have a good grasp of semantic splitting, it's time to go through the implementation. And to do so, we're going to follow a Python notebook that you can find on GitHub, link in the description below. Of course. Nothing too interesting here, um, but you can see that we get the NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn for plotting, Wikipedia to get the pages from Wikipedia. We have the light LLM package to run the embeddings because it allows you to use a lot of LLMs, including OpenAI embedding models. And finally, reach to display things with colors and nice formatting. The first step is to load the environment variables that contains our OpenAPI key. And to do so, we use the .env package with the load.env function. Then we need to build the example document. And if you remember, we are going to fetch two pages from Wikipedia and interleave their sections. So we use the Wikipedia package and first fetch linear algebra, then Francis 1 of France. We get sections, so here section 3 and 4, and then section 5 and 3 for those pages, and we interleave the section in an array called sections. Now, we are going to define the data pipelines that will transform our sections into sentences grouped by window with the embeddings from the first half and the second half. Then we add the section ID column using the range of the length of the section, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. The next step is to call a sequence of transforming function that will give us the desired shape for the data frame. To understand what each function does, we're going to print the data frame before and after each transformation. So quickly, we have three of them. First, the sentence splitter, the sentence grouper, and finally, the group embedder. Before the sentence splitter, we get our data frame with the section and the section ID. After that, we get a list of sentences, each with a section ID that corresponds to the section from which it came from. To do so, we first receive our data frame containing the sentences with their section ID. Then we get that data frame after the transformation. As you can see, we get the sentences from the window as an array, so here containing six sentences each. Then we get a section IDs list contains the ID of each sentence. So this is useful so we can track back from which section each sentence comes from. Then we have the section split column which is a boolean saying whether there is a section split or not and finally the section split position. As you can see here as the window moves we start to get sentences from the next section so here 0 0 0 and 1. And at that point, we start to get the section split, which is true. And then we get the split position at five because the section changes at the fifth position. Finally, if you remember, we need to compute the embeddings of the first half and the second half of each group. So we can then compute the divergence between them. Here, we compute the embeddings. And as you can see, we have the same data frame here, but two additional columns, embedding one and embedding two. Each one is a vector presenting the semantic of the text of the first half and the second half. Okay, now we are going to compute the divergence and do a few plots to analyze the results. Let's compute the divergence. To do so, we create a new data frame called DF metrics, which is a copy from the last data frame. Then we compute the similarity. OpenAI gives us normalized embeddings, so we can use the dot product to have a similarity measure. It will be between 0 and 1, 0 being totally different, 1 being totally similar. But if you remember, we need divergence, and we compute it as 1 minus the similarity. So it's inverse, 1 being totally dissimilar, and 0 being totally similar. We have all we need to analyze the result with a few plots. Here the first plot is the divergence by section split. So here, when we have no section split, the divergence is low compared to when we have a split in the window. It makes sense, because if you remember, when we have no splits, all sentences come from the same wiki page. And when we have a split, there is a mix between sentences from one page and the other. So the divergence will be higher in the second case. Another way to see it is to use the scatter plot. It gives us the same view, but maybe a better visualization of the variance. 
And finally, we plot the divergence in function of the window position, which is really interesting. So here you can see the divergence as we move the window and we can see three peaks, major peaks. And guess what? It's precisely the place where the section changed from one page to the other. Now we'll show you a quick technique to find the peaks automatically, so you don't have to manually look at the data to find the split points. This technique uses find peaks from SciPy. You can give the divergence as a time series and specify a height threshold. Here I use 80% of the max. So if you look at here, we see that this peak is the highest. And I set the threshold as 80%, so everything above 80%, which is a peak, will be defined as a split point. Now you can see in that graph that we found three peaks, this one, this one, and this one, and it's precisely what we needed. And now to show you that it worked, we are going to print a few sentences before and after each peak. So here the first peak. We get text from linear algebra and then from the history of the King of France. Same here, the second peak. Here it's text from the mathematical topic and then from the history topic. And finally, it's the same for the last peak. So, semantic splitting is a powerful technique to optimally split documents without relying on predefined rules such as a fixed number of characters or a fixed number of sentences. It can be implemented simply using the sliding window technique we saw in that video. But there exists open source implementation if you prefer to rely on a library. I strongly encourage you to give it a try, especially if you work with Retrieval Augmented Generation. And if you want to go further, I have another video where I show you how to write generic applications with no boilerplate while having access to the most powerful features and 100 plus LLMs in a unified API. Check it out and see you in the next one.